God wants you well. He wants you well because He loves you. I want to preach on if you are saying, how long? How long, O Lord? I believe you and my manifestation has not yet come. I'm still not healed. Have you gone through that? It's okay. All right, but don't stop there. Go into faith. You are in the right posture when you don't give up trusting in the grace of God. All of us have moments where we feel like, you know, we cannot see the future, but your future is beautiful. It's as bright as God's promises. Let's believe God and let's walk in our inheritance. God is teaching us that He's not a formula. He wants you. Beautiful. This is the love of God. This is the love of God. Amen. God loving people. That's why God wants you well. You must know that God wants you well, not because He just wants to demonstrate His power. He wants you well because He loves you. Amen. Amen? Just turn to your neighbor, smile at the person and just say, you, don't have, you have no idea how much God loves you. We still don't. How many can say amen? We have no idea how much God loves us. Amen? And we are still discovering His love. You see, when I see all of you, I don't see you as people. Oh, Pastor Prince, how can you do that? I see you as the flock. The flock of a good shepherd. And the Lord says that if I see you that way, you'll be healed. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on, on Jesus the iniquity of us all. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Notice that it starts by saying what? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. Amen. The picture of sheep and shepherd. Years ago, I wrote in my, my white margin Bible, which I use, I love white margin Bibles because I can put down my own commentary instead of reading other people's commentary, you know. Get my own, my own word from the Lord that He has for the now moment in my life. So in my white margin Bible, there's a lot of notes. And you can go to that portion in Isaiah and 1 Peter 2 that quotes Isaiah, and you'll find me saying, writing down there, this imagery of shepherd and flock promotes healing. Amen? The prophet Ezekiel says that the Lord is against the shepherds of Israel because they have not sought that which was lost. They have not bound up the wounds of the sheep. They have not poured in the oil. So it's a picture of healing, but in a flock and a shepherd imagery. The number one image, I've said this and time and time again, I've said it, and I hope that you receive it in your heart. The number one image that we have of God, God can be a fortress, a stronghold, a tower, but the number one image of God is that of a shepherd. David knew the Lord as that before he was even a king. Amen. It gives you leadership, um, sp a leadership spirit as well as even the skill that you need. Amen. So for the past few weeks, the Lord's been teaching us a lot on healing. I've prayed and I've, I've pressed through asking the Lord. Okay, when I say press through, it's not as if God needs that kind of persuasion. But I say I press through for my own sake because there are barriers on my mind. There are wrong believing that I have to press through. You understand that? God is always willing to share. And I've asked God, unveil to me the secrets of healing. Because I see people struggling still. I still see myself struggling in some areas. Yeah, our past, the pastors are not perfect. Amen? So we, we, we are people who are learning just like you. But how many are not satisfied with where you are? There was a time in ancient Israel that there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Hey, not one feeble. That's amazing, isn't it? So for the past week, few weeks, the Lord has been showing things like, number one, when someone falls sick, don't judge them. I said don't judge them. You still remember that message? Amen. A man had dropsy in a synagogue and Jesus was there on the Sabbath day. 
And then the people watch the Pharisees, that man's pastor, watch Jesus to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath day. How, how terrible is that? He, they knew that Jesus would heal. They're not watching to see if he could heal. They are watching to see if he would heal. How terrible is that? Whether he would heal on the Sabbath day so they can find fault. And Jesus says, which of you, when your child or an ox fall into a pit, you will not immediately rescue him on the Sabbath day? Remember the story of uh, Jessica McClure? in 1980-something, the baby girl that fell into the pit. The whole world was riveted on that situation until she was rescued. Simple analogy. Jesus says that sick people, the way we see them, are people that fall into a pit. Like that, big, that like little girl, that toddler that fell into a pit. Don't find fault with people. Don't look at people who are sick and say they should have exercised. They should have washed their diet. Or they should have, they should have, they should, until you fall sick. Then you realize it's more than just diet because it's something spiritual. I say it's something spiritual. Now, by all means, diet, by all means, eat well, by all means, exercise. But you still have challenges that you cannot cope with even in the fit body. Because... Sickness is spiritual. Sin is spiritual. There ought not be any sickness in the world. And those who are against uh, healing and all that, they'll, they'll have a lot of problems when they go to heaven because there are no hospitals there. All right? And, they, and, and I don't know what they're praying when they say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They're going to have a problem. Amen? So we are believing something that we're going to enjoy in eternity. Amen. Can I have a good Amen. amen except we will not need healing, we'll be in our glorified body, not in need of healing. Can I have a good amen? So, Pastor Prince, what about those who believe God and then they are dead and now, hey, you know what? They got the total healing. Because right now, they're happier than you are. They are more alive than you are. Amen? But this side of heaven, let's believe God and let's walk in our inheritance. Let's walk with what God has for us. Amen? Can I have a good amen? The woman who was bowed down, Again, the Pharisee, her pastor looked at Jesus and he was angry when she got healed. And he says there are six days that men ought to work. Ought to work is in, in his mind. Jesus says this woman ought to be loose. Ought to be loose is in Jesus' mind on the Sabbath day. Six days men ought to work. In those days come and be healed. This, man, this woman ought to be loose. And Jesus said this, which of you, having a donkey that's thirsty, will not bring your donkey on the Sabbath? Isn't this lady better than a donkey? She's a daughter of Abraham. So the way we see people, we need to know this, that people who, who, who fall sick are like someone who fell into a pit. And a pit has an idea of an, an, an enemy sometimes. Someone lay up a trap. So it's a spiritual attack. When a brother or a sister is diagnosed with something and all that, as far as I'm concerned, it's a spiritual attack. It's not time for us to find fault. Can I have a good amen? It's time for us to pray and bring healing. Can I have a good amen? So church, we have shared last, week, last few weeks on healing because I've been pressing in, asking God, Lord, if there's things that are, I, I, I'm, I'm not believing right, please show me. It's not about doing something more. God, show me what I can do. Even though we pray, Lord, what can we do? Okay? But the thing is that it's about seeing more, people. It's not about doing more. It's about seeing more. First of all, you need to have images from the Bible. Can I have a good amen? Uh, I mentioned just now, all we like sheep have gone astray. First Peter chapter 2. Let's look at First Peter, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Now, I love this because the first thing you need to know is the person of Jesus. Have you noticed that whenever the Bible talks about Jesus carrying our sins or our diseases, because he carried both our sins and our diseases, amen? In Isaiah 53, surely he has borne our diseases our koli and carried our makov, all right, our pains in Hebrew. Notice it says, surely he. And the emphasis is not on the work, but on the person. Surely he bore our diseases and carried our pains. Matthew 8 verse 17, quoting Isaiah says, himself the person, himself 
took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Have you had a child uh, who, who is just at, um, you know, crying because of a viral, a viral attack or uh, some sort of pain that the child is going through and it's someone you really love with all your heart and, and you are there, you, you feel helpless? Mothers, were there ever times that you felt like, if I can take this pain on myself, I would do it. If I can take this fever on myself, I would do it. Well, Jesus had love for you like, like what a mother would have, but exceeds that. That Himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. We need to know that because the emphasis is Himself. It's not so much the work. We all want healing, we focus on the work. But the person gives value to the work. The, when you have the person, you have the value of the work. Can I have a good amen? Like for example, 1 Peter 2 says, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, and He is the propitiation for our sins. It does not say, like some people say, Jesus makes propitiation for our sins. It doesn't say He makes. He's like someone there to do things for us. Amen? No. He is the propitiation for our sins. It's 1 John 2. He is the propitiation for our sins. And down here, notice the emphasis, who His own self. It wasn't an angel. It wasn't a prophet. It wasn't somebody else. Who His own self. I pray that you see the heart of the Holy Spirit. And let me illustrate. The person carries the benefits of the work. Let's say you're studying to be a doctor, okay? And uh, what happens when uh, uh, you, go, you walk to the hospitals, you know, when, when you, you can be out with your friends, but you walk, you know, you spend so, so many hours walking to the hospitals while, while you, are, you, are, you are an apprentice and while you're learning, you know, uh, as a stu medical student, and uh, you do a lot of theses, a lot of homework, you do all the kind of things, and down, after a few years, you're a full-fledged medical doctor. Now, how can we take advantage of all that you have learned? How? How can we take advantage of all your work, all your theses that you have passed or you, you have ex ex excellent credentials and all that? How can we take advantage of that? How can I take advantage of that? I go to you. When I go to you, you have all the benefits of all your work. I don't have to know your work. I just have to go to you. Can I have a good amen? You carry all the benefits of the work. Hence, the Holy Spirit emphasizes the person and not the work. Now, if we don't watch it, grace teaching can be such that today, people disassociate Jesus from the work. They talk about redemption, they talk about grace, they talk about, about uh, the finished work. But look, without Jesus, there is no finished work. You want the benefits of the finished work? You go to Jesus. Amen. So there are times, like I remember years ago when my daughter was was down with viral fever, and uh, uh, the doctor says virus, so we, you know, you just take your, it will take its course for either seven days or, and the most one week, it's the same. Okay, and then I, I remember Jessica was crying, her little uh, cherubic face and her little dimples like the mother's, right? She was just crying, crying, and, and I look at her and there's nothing we can do. And I remember, I go over her cot and I look at her, and I started singing over her because I, I, I'm helpless. I prayed, all right? I took communion, you know, and we can turn communion into a formula. At last, I just looked to the Lord. And I know the Lord never leaves me nor forsake me. But there's something called manifest presence, the glory that I needed in this moment because daddy was just helpless. So I was crying, you know, like when she cries, I, I just had tears rolling down. And what can I do, Lord? So I started singing. You are the Lord that He loved her. You are the Lord, her healer. <laughs> you send your word and heal all her disease. You are the Lord, her healer. You are the Lord. And I sang it over and over again. In your presence, in your presence, there is peace. And the more I sang, the more I took my eyes off my daughter, which I was absorbed with her, her pain, her afflictions, her crying, and I started getting focused on the Lord. I started seeing His power, His glory. The more I sang, the more I saw His love, His grace. 
See, singing and praising the Lord doesn't benefit him. When we say magnify the Lord, he's already magnified. You are magnifying the Lord to yourself. You are enlarging the consciousness of God. And we all need to be in that place. How many understand that? Like I said, well, Pastor Prince, you are, are you saying that God is not there until you start singing and all that? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I needed to break through my smallness. Amen. I need to see the Lord and not my daughter's affliction. His greatness, His love, God, I must be greater than what's going on, than what the devil is doing. Can I be good? Amen. And I sang and sang and I felt His tangible presence. You know something? Wendy was bathing. She was, you know, washing up and all that in the room. When she came out, she was healed. She took a temperature, the fever broke. All right? Now, there's one instance I, I remember how that I could not do anything and just have the person in the room. Worship the person. All the benefits of the work comes with the person. Can I have a good amen? amen. Now, the first Peter 2, 24 says, who his own self bear our sins. I hope that you see this by now. And by the way, the rapture, when he comes again, the Lord himself shall descend shall descend. The Lord Himself shall descend. Amen? We're looking for Him. We're not looking for Gabriel or Michael, the archangel. We're looking for Him. Amen? We're not looking for all the saints that have gone on before. It'd be nice to, to, to uh, meet, meet up with Smith Wigglesworth and all that, some heroes of faith, but we are looking for Himself. Amen, people? Who His own self bear our sins in His own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. Righteousness here is a noun, not a verb. A lot of people, when they read this, they think that we, sh we stop doing sin and we start doing right things. It's not saying that. It's saying you're dead to sins. It's a done deal. You should live unto righteousness, which means what? Believe you are righteous. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Live into that. Amen. Live in that new identity. And then it puts a colon. Can you see a colon there? By whose stripes you were healed. Now, if you study punctuation, you will learn that you put a colon, a colon, colon there to, listen, to either share something you want to emphasize. You're saying something and you want to emphasize it, you put a colon and then you emphasize it. So whatever follows, you emphasize. Another thing is that whatever follows the colon, all right, will translate or give meaning to what goes before. In other words, because you are living as a righteous person, not, not your behavior, your, your new identity, you are now saying, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. You walk in righteousness consciousness. Now, by whose stripes you were healed is yours. And that's why there's a colon, okay? Watch this now. For you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Right? Remember, uh, this quotation is from Isaiah 53, but Isaiah has a negative uh, picture there. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord put on him the iniquity of us all. Right? But here it says, we are no more going astray. We are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And please don't turn this into, you must return an active voice. No, this is in the, in, in the passive voice in the Greek. You, you have now been returned. Somebody returned you. Who is it? The Holy Spirit. You are now returned unto the shepherd. Know this word shepherd? Amen. We are no more sheep going astray. We are now sheep in the flock. Sheep taken care of. Hallelujah. For you were a sheep going astray, but you are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Can I, can I have a good amen? amen? So that's the difference in Isaiah 53 and now that Christ has finished the work. Another thing that's different is this. Very interesting. In, uh, in Isaiah, it says that by his kavura, by his uh, stripes, we are healed. And over there, you find the plural, by whose stripes you were healed. But what happened to Jesus and his idea of the, 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 the in, in Hebrew, when something is so violent and done, they use the plural, uh, the plural uh, word. Amen? Like someone died a violent death, they use the word death with an S in, in Hebrew. You understand that? Like water is abundant. Mayim is plural. Can I have a good amen? All right? So uh, by his stripes, we think there are many stripes. Yes, it includes many stripes. But over here in the Greek, it says, who is own self, okay, by whose stripes, the word stripe there should not be S. It is by whose stripe you were healed. Now, T.J. McCrossan, a Greek scholar, says this, that if the, word, if, if the word stripe is used in a singular way, that means knowing that he received many stripes, 
All right? In Isaiah 53. That means what Jesus received, there's not even a sliver of skin left. If there's a sliver of skin left, it cannot be, the singular cannot be used. It must be stripes. But in the Greek, Greek is very accurate. That means his whole back is one big hole. There's not even a sleeve of skin left. Now, when I, when I, when I meditated on this, I, I felt that, that people would not, you know, take it lightly. So I'm going to show you once again, right? How by his stripes you were healed. Now, this is 40 or minus one, which is 39 stripes. But in the, in the, in the Roman uh, um, uh, culture, it's also proven they beat people 39 to 40 times, okay? So the thing is this, the Jewish beating is different. They are, they are 40 times is using a leather tongue, okay? But the Romans use something called cat or nine tails where they have jagged, rusty nails and uh, crushed glass and, and different sort of things. And that's only one of its tendrils, you know? It has many, 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 uh, what do you call that? Like an octopus, right? A lot of hands. And it's all with, with uh, embedded with this jagged, uh, 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 rusty nails and sharp objects. So one stroke, you have many lines behind you. So for, for the Greek to use that by his stripe, singular, it must have happened like this. Watch. See, it's possible. We still see sliver of skin, don't we? Okay. We're going to go faster. Back again. By his stripes, you are healed. Not a sliver of skin left. Do you know why he went through that? Because he loves you. Remember mothers, that feeling that you have, if I can take it, I'll do it. Now, I know some of you say, Pastor, you know, you shouldn't be showing gross stuff like that. You are adults. And it's best you know the reality. And by the way, what, what was gross? I, I didn't show you what really happened. I didn't show you his bones, his arteries, you know, his veins, his muscles. Actually, the Bible says in Psalms, my bones look and stare at me. People, you are loved. He loves you so much. Amen, that he went through that scourging, that by his stripe, you are healed. Amen. And I use the singular because that's how it's in the Greek. By his stripe, you are healed. And that means not a sliver of skin left. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament Levitical sacrifices, the Bible says the burnt offering, the skin belongs to the one that offers the burnt offering. So every time I think about, Lord Jesus, I come to you and you are my burnt offering. Amen. I think that I receive his skin. Now what is his skin? His health, His strength. How many want Jesus' skin? Amen. Amen. How many want his, his radiance, His complexion? And you know, in heaven, Jesus is not old. He's young. And by the way, by the way God the Father is young. Right? I, I used to pray, Father God, and I see an old man, and I heard a rebuke many years ago. Son? I say, yes. Why do you see me like that? I say, like what? Like an old man? I say, uh, you are father. And my father happened to have a beard. And his, in his old, older years, you know, he had white beard. So I think father, you know, father should be, should be uh, old. The son, up here, there is no curse. Growing old is part of the curse. Up here, we are all young. <laughs> then I saw a young father God, a young Jesus, young angels. That's why the Bible says when they went to see uh, Jesus' tomb in, in the Gospels, all right? The Bible says they saw a young man sitting on his throne, shining clothes. A young man. It says a young man. Angels are young. They are young. Amen? So there's a place in God. Look at Psalms 105. Psalms 105. God brought them out. Children of Israel. Them here is the children of Israel. God brought them out with silver and gold. And there was none feeble among His stripes. None feeble. So there was a time 
where God's people, not a single person was sick. Now I know, right, you don't have to go out here and find people that are sick. There are people that are sick. Amen. I mean, even among us pastors, there are, depending on where you find us sometimes, we still get sick. Amen. Amen. And the pastor is not saying amen, but um, I'm telling you the secret. They are, okay? Sometimes they fall sick. You find them in a good time. Praise God. Right? Amen. But the thing is this, uh, uh, we are not happy about that. We, 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 want, we want the hundredfold that God has. How, how about you? We want, we want our people where there's none feeble among them. Now, do you know how many people were there that came out of Egypt that day? By the way, the context here is Egypt. Let me prove to you. The verse before that says he destroyed the firstborn. That's what, that's what happened at the past overnight. The verse after this says Egypt was glad when they departed. Egypt was so happy. <laughs> Finally, you all go. In fact, the officers of, of Pharaoh told Pharaoh during one of the plagues, hey, please let them go lest we die. But because of the hardness of his heart, he refused to let them go. So the, Egypt was very happy when they left. So the context is very clear that the next day when they came out, there was none feeble. And an guesstimate of the number of people came out, 3 million. Even if you say 2 million, okay, let me uh, use that very conservative. 2 million people. Now, 2 million people, people who were slaves, people who don't have proper diet, people who lived in stressful situations, doctors. Are you listening? Stress is the silent killer. Amen. People who don't have enough sleep every day, they wake up about four and they sleep about 10 at night because they are slaves. The Bible used the word heart bondage many times about what, what they went through. The Bible says they were, they were serving with rigor more than once. The Bible says they groaned and they cried out to God. Amen. Again and again. These are people that were, were, were uh, stepping on straws Amen. Making bricks is back-breaking. They have to lay the brick and they got to carry things. It's a back-breaking task. I'm telling you people, hey, listen, this is not the environment and Pastor Prince uh, 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 probably is their good exercise. Hey, even doctors tell you, you over-exercise, you destroy your body. This is not exercise. This is over-destroying their, their faculties. They are pushing themselves too far and too much. What kind of diet do you think they have? Very little to eat. They probably have berry berry. They probably have things that lack calcium, the proper nutrition. And yet at the end, the next day when they came out, none feeble. None feeble. So let's, let's go interview them, shall we? Hey, shall we? Because sometimes we read the Bible and, and, and leave things just show them the, the, the verse 37. We can just look at the, the, the scripture and think, okay, these are just words on, on a page. No, this literally happened. And I'm here to tell you, if this can happen when they partook, the night before they partook of a Passover lamb, which is just a shadow of what, what we have. We have the true lamb of God. Hello? Amen? They partook of the, the roasted lamb the night before. Amen. The blood was on their doorpost and the lintel, making the cross. The angel of death sees the cross. Amen. The Lord also sees the cross and tells the angel of death he can't go, go in. Because why? There's been a death. But what were they doing inside? They were discerning the body. They were eating the body of the Lord. Amen. The lamb. And it was such a picture of the substance. If a shadow can do that for them, how much more the substance that you and I have? We have the true lamb of God, people. But for a while, just go back to the shadow. They are there for our examples. They are there for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. The Old Testament is, is uh, there to show us in detail the doctrines of the New Testament. So let's, let's, let's interview, shall we? Doctors, mental doctors, psychiatrists, amen. Uh, self doctors, self-made doctors. Uh, those who promote uh, health products, okay, all the organic food guys here, amen, all the good guys, amen, all, everyone has their role in modern society. Without these people, you see a lot more sick people, okay? So thank God for this, but here I'm talking about supernatural healing. So I want you to interview, because my, my knowledge is limited, so let's interview them as they come out. Number one, do you think only young people came out? 
So let's put the young aside for a while. We know the young came out, but put the young aside. You might think that they're naturally young so that, you know, they're healthy. Let's interview those who've been slaving there for years, 40 years. They've been slaving there. All right, shall we? Okay, let's go to this old man. He looks old, but he's upright. He's walking straight. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Um, how old are you? I've been here since the time we became slaves. Whoa, that's quite a long time, sir. And uh, uh, how old are you? Don't ask my age. How young do I look? Whoa, sir, you look strong, upright. Usually a person that's about 70, 80 starts stooping down, right? You know, um, yeah, I'm 80. Another person says, I'm 90. Hey, this is my friend. Amen? Then we see another guy chasing his, his wife. The grandma, ah, she's laughing. Ah, and then she's chasing. Can you come here, girl? Come here, girl. Amen? And the word non-feeble, and the word feeble here is also the word kashal, which has to do many a times with not just general sickness, but, but st strong feet. Amen? Kashal is when your feet is not strong. Amen? So God prepared them for their journey into the wilderness. But listen, if you have uh, any uh, uh, problems, arthritis and all that, you cannot walk. So non-feeble is correct. It covers everything. Amen. Not a single person had problem walking the next day. So you ask them, uh, sir, is it uh, uh, you, you, your diet is good diet? What good diet? For years, we've been eating junk. We've been eating leftovers. You think diet is the reason? But, 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 but my YouTube, I see a lot of YouTube says that eat this, eat that, eat this, and you'll be like, what YouTube? The only tube I know is straw tube to make breaks. Don't waste my time. You media night. You got it? Media night. Okay. <laughs> so let's interview somebody else. Ah, we go to this person here. You look like you're running. You're running after your... That's my wife. I just have new power. <laughs> have you been taking ginseng? What's that? Uh, uh, never mind. It's okay. Ah, I just know when I took the lamb, everything came alive. Can you imagine all these things happening? What, what do you think they came out? All came out like that. No, they came out singing. And they were rich. He brought them out with silver and gold, which I didn't expound yet. Right? So, let's interview another one. Okay, so he's looking around. And you ask him, excuse me, sir. Have you had your health screening? Health what? Health screen? Test on your body. Have you had it tested? Because you, you know, at your age, right? You are, you're probably having a lot of block here, block this, block that. Even your mental block, you know, the potential for Alzheimer's, those kind of tests. Have you taken those tests? Have you had your blood test? I tell you something about my blood, all right? Needs no testing. I've been shedding it, working with my hands. You see all these hands? See this finger? Dried blood, you know? I've been working like this for years. Blood drop. Is that a test? It's a testing for me, okay? What are you talking about, boy? You Midianites talk strange. So we, we, everything we ask for, we are concerned about. Amen? We can ask them, and the fact remains non-feeble. Among being conservative, two million of them. Non-feeble. We got a church of about 30,000 now. Amen? Um, and, and, and my ministry goes into millions of homes. Can we believe God for non-feeble? Yes, even us pastors here and there will come down with a sore throat. We'll come down with a sneeze, whatever. And okay, while we are working towards the hundredfold, let's believe God together. Amen? That's not my message today. <laughs> That's not my message. But let me finish off with, with, with the foundation first because we always have new people, new people, all right, who are wondering, if I come to the message itself, my message today is totally something else about healing. And I want you to, to under, understand this part here because a lot of people are discouraged. I might, might as well tell you now. I want to preach on if you are saying, how long? How long, O Lord? Like the psalmist, how long, O Lord? I believe you and my manifestation has not yet come. How long? That's my message. But I have to lay the foundation first. You understand, people? The night before in Exodus 12, they ate this from verse 8. They ate the flesh on that night, roasted in fire. With unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw. A lot of people present Jesus Christ as a great example. 
Be, beware of that. They, they treat Jesus as a great example. He's a master teacher. He's the great physician. He's an example for us to emulate. Now, that is not going to get your body healed. You must eat him roasted in fire, which means he died for you. He was under God's judgment for you. We preach Christ crucified. If Jesus lived a perfect life and didn't die for us, we'll still be lost. Amen? No amount of imitating Him can save you. No amount of imitating Him can make you right with God. Amen? He has to go to the judgment. So eat Jesus knowing that He was judged for you, for me, because He loves you. And then you eat it with faith. Amen? Like the, the body that you saw just now, that was striped. When, every, every time you partake, see that image and just know this, He loves me. The Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. It's one thing to take it, all right? Just uh, as a ritual, it's nothing to take it knowing He loves you. Like I said, sometimes, you know, for some cases, instead of just rushing through a communion and all that, if your child is there, it's a bit more difficult, I understand that. But if your child is not there, take time to worship the Lord. Something serious especially, amen? Worship the Lord until you sense His presence, until, until the consciousness of His greatness is greater than your feeling about your, your infirmity. Can I have a good amen, people? Now, they, God says, don't eat it raw, nor boil at all with water. We call this the watered down version. Don't water down Jesus, amen? But roast it in fire. Its head with its legs and its entrails. I find this interesting that legs is mentioned there. So when you partake of the Lord Jesus, know that the part of your body, what they needed was strong legs. Many of them had berry, berry, the lack of uh, nutritious um, like vegetables and all that. You get berry, berry, all right? And, and many of them were suffering from knee conditions and, and uh, just, just old age problems, they call it, right? So they partook of the leg of the lamb, knowing that the leg of the lamb is whole, complete. And as they partake it as judge for them, they receive the benefits of Jesus' healthy legs. And that caused them to walk the next day. Can I have a good amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. I've been taking communion, Pastor Prince, but how long? I'm still not healed. Remember the testimony I shared with you about the boy? The boy who uh, from India who had stroke? We have this testimony. Okay, I'm trying to find uh, the boy's testimony. Okay. Joy, the lady from our church who went over to India to coin battle. Right, Lawrence? The founder of Grace Revelation. Now, she's an amazing lady doing a great work there in India. And she shares about this boy. In May 2017, this eight-year-old boy, John Rufus, started having stroke-like symptoms. His face drooped on one side. Look, look up here. And he was unable to speak, eat or smile. He felt very ashamed and refused to go to school. The couple brought him to many doctors, many doctors, but no one could help him. So they approached me and I gave them Pastor Prince's book, Health and Wholeness, Joy said. Joy and uh, Health and Wholeness through the Holy Communion. And I showed them the Calvary animation video, what happened at the cross that Pastor Prince has used in his sermons. They started partaking of the Holy Communion as a family and John's condition began to improve. Within 15 days, John's face was back to normal. Within 15 days, okay. Now here we have someone. Did you hear what I said? I, I emphasize purposely, because you all heard me share this before, just last, last, was it last two weeks? All right? But this time, I want to answer the question, by the grace of God, if I may, all right, how long, Lord, will I wait for my, I've been taking communion for, for some time now, and still no manifestation. Well, the last line here says, within 15 days of taking communion, John's face went back to normal. What if they had stopped on the sixth day? What if they had stopped on the 11th day? What if they stopped on the 13th day? What if they had stopped on the 14th day? Pastor Prince, is it you must do for 15 days? <laughs> no, Pastor Mark. You don't have to. All right? I'm just illustrating the, the people of Israel I'm still uh, uh, pressing in to ask God for this because they received instantaneous the night before. They, 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 the next day, they went out instantaneously. But when you partake, you partake with expectation that you're going to be healed instantly. Go back to Exodus 12 again. Look at Exodus 12. 
Exodus 12. Do not eat it raw. Look at the next verse. Verse 10. Okay. Thus you shall eat it. Verse 11. With a belt on your waist, sandals on your feet, stuff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. What does it mean? Belt on your waist, sandals on your feet, stuff in your hand. Get ready for physical deliverance out of Egypt. Now, what was true for them physically? All right. For us, get ready out of your Egyptian disease. For I'll put none of the diseases of Egypt upon you. So you must get ready. Start dressing up. I'm not referring to physical dressing again. Have an attitude of when I partake, I'm, I'm getting my physical deliverance. God told them, told them to be in a posture, get ready to go out. But, but you don't understand. An old man says, I, I can't move. Uh, another person says, the doctor says that if I move, it'll be bad for my heart, you know. But the Lord said, get ready for physical. Start posturing yourself. Whatever you can do right now, at least show your faith. Can I, can I be good? Amen. They got ready. None of them said, what if it doesn't work? Amen. An old man, that old, that old man I told you about, he started wearing his belt. All right? Good himself. He started putting on sandals. I'm moving out of Egypt. I'm moving out. And I don't care what I've been told. I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to believe God. Amen. Amen. Are you listening, people? I think we got to have that kind of faith and attitude. They receive instantaneously. Wow. The next day, they receive it. Have we seen uh, um, manifestations like this? Yes. Very often. Many a times while people are partaking, we see that happen. But we are answering the question, we want to answer the question, how long? First of all, don't condemn yourself for asking how long. <laughs> you people of grace, you know, we believe in no condemnation and we are the worst in condemning ourselves for every little thing. We are sick, we condemn ourselves. No, you just fell into a pit. Now let's get you out. Now you don't understand. The doctors told me I was so disappointed that I have high blood pressure. The doctors told me I have this condition. Now I feel so down. I feel so bad. But really, why, why do you feel so bad? You just fell into a pit. Let's get you out. No one is condemning you. Stop condemning yourself. In some circles, you know, it's like you're, it's a sin to be sick. So no one tells anybody that they are not feeling well. Amen. No, just the other day I told, uh, I was doing a shoot and, 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 and I had sore throat, you know, and I, and I told them, we are doing it. Let's do it. Amen. Praise God. I'm not going to consider my body like Abraham. Use Abrahamic faith. Abraham, when he was 100 years old, consider not his own body. Consider God's promise instead. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Consider not. Amen. I know it's staring you, it's painful, it's, you can feel it. Consider not. Consider God's Word. Amen. God's Word says, by His stripes you are healed. Amen. So walk in that. Can I have a good amen? amen? So don't condemn yourself for saying how long, how long. It's okay. All right? But don't stop there. Go into faith. Some people even have this idea that, that faith means don't even say how long. It's okay to tell God. But make sure you tell God. David did. David says in Psalms 13, Oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Actually, this is from the journal of Pastor Lawrence. I, I, it's, not, it's not Psalms 13. I just took it out actually. No, it's Psalms 13. Have you gone through that? Have you had this in your heart? Huh? You feel like God has put you aside? Amen? So it's okay. Even David, a man after God's heart, says, How long? How long, Lord? Maybe he's believing God for something. He doesn't see it happen. Amen? But look, don't stay there. Look at Psalms 13. Drop down. Look at David. But I have, but, the but makes all the difference. I have trusted in your mercy. Guess what? Mercy is chesed, grace. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. The Hebrew there is Yeshua. So, you are in the right posture when you don't give up trusting in the grace of God. By His grace, the manifestation will come. By His grace, amen. 34, 60, but don't give up. Amen. And it's okay to say, how long, Lord? It's, it's, it's a relationship. You know, we, we in the word of faith uh, 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 background and all that, we have this idea sometimes that the moment you say, ah, oh, I bind that word in Jesus' name. It's almost you can't express anything to one another that's negative. Hey, you can talk to God about everything. Everything David told God about, David had victory. Even when he shared with God in a negative way. But the very area in all his Psalms, you cannot find this. He never told God about his sexual life. 
And that's the area he fell. Whatever area he told God about, he had victory. Even when he exposed it out of bitterness of soul or anguish, God gave him, then the Selah. Have you noticed the word Selah in Psalms? After he poured his complaint, in the presence of God, when you complain, complain in God's presence. Don't complain to the, to the waitress. Don't complain to, to uh, Pastor Mark. He will just laugh it off. Don't, don't, don't anyhow. All right, talk to God. You want to complain? Tell God, this is how I feel, Lord. This is how I feel, Lord. How long I feel like, if you're talking to him, there'll be a seller moment. And in that moment, you feel his comfort. I've done it before. When things get so pressurizing, I go for a walk. And in that walk, I talk to Jesus. And I don't pray the usual prayer of faith. I just tell him what I'm afraid of. I tell him what I'm concerned about. No one hears about it but him. It's for his years. And at the end of that walk, there's always a seller. Or during that walk, there's a seller moment. I stop for a while. Something just knowing, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. What needless pain we bear. All because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. Okay, so here is the turning point. Look at David in Psalms 35. David says this, How long, O Lord, will you look on and do nothing? Rescue me from their fierce attacks. Protect my life from these lions. Do you feel sometimes... All right, maybe your colleague or someone, uh, uh, you know, is attacking you or uh, uh, poison, uh, so social postings and all that on, on social media. You know, uh, do you feel like these people are lions? And you feel God is not doing anything? Amen. That's how David felt. Will you look on and do nothing? But the next verse, verse 18 says, Then I'll thank you in front of the great assembly. I'll praise you before all the people. Look at this, look at these words here. Word for word, I'll thank you in front of the great assembly. I'll praise you before the people. While he's complaining, Jesus is giving praise on his behalf. It doesn't seem together, right, these verses? And yet it's next to each other. I'm going to show you this verse right now in the New Testament, Hebrews. Hebrews quotes this verse, and this verse again is used in Psalms 22. Both Jesus who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified, all of us, we are all one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. We are all of the same vine as Jesus. We are same one with Jesus. That's why Jesus is not afraid to call us brothers. Saying, I'll declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly, I'll sing praise to you. This appears twice, Psalms 35 and Psalms 22. So guess what? While you're complaining, Jesus, your high priest, is praising. Okay? Okay. Now let's go before they came out None feeble, loaded down with silver and gold. Long before that happened, God sent them who? Moses, right? So this is, we, we, are, we are backing back, we are going back now. Before they were delivered, God sent Moses. And Moses was sent to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Watch this now. The first time Moses and Aaron stepped into Pharaoh's court to ask for the deliverance of God's people. Look at this, Exodus 5. After this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go so they may hold a festival in my honour in the wilderness. Is that so? Retorted Pharaoh. And who is the Lord? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. When you read your Bible, you got to be there, okay? Okay, let's drop down. That same day, the same day that Moses went in for the first time to exhort the king to let Israel go. That same day, Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. So now, you cannot give them the straw. Tell them to find their own straw. Wow. And yet, the number, daily number, the daily rate, all right, of those bricks must still be delivered. They are lazy. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are crying out. Let us go and offer sacrifices to God, to our God. Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. Can you hear the voice of the devil? 
Pharaoh is the type of the devil. Can you hear it? Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. Some of you, you don't realize that you're under a hard taskmaster for years. The devil doesn't always come and speak directly to you. He may use uh, 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 friendly people, friendly voices, even relatives and, and uh, uh, your colleagues or your boss even. And even right now, when you learn about rest and you try to rest, like what I'm preaching right now, one of the best things to do is sit down because Jesus, He sat down and taught the people. He sat down in the boat, He taught them. He sat on the mountain, He taught them. I don't know why we are standing. <laughs> and I'm sure that Jesus is strong and healthy, amen, amen. And yet we are standing. Something is wrong. I thought I was starting a new trend. What do you think? Shall I? I know Pastor Mark will love this. He might just fall asleep. All right? Every time some of you do this, you know, without doing anything, whether it's at home or your leisure time, you can't even rest inside. You know why? Inside your mind, you say, Get up! Do your work! You won't accomplish much. You're wasting time. That taskmaster is still in your mind. And that's the devil's voice. Many of you, you feel like you're wasting time. All right? Just, I'm not talking about watch, uh, on the computer or watching TV. That's not relaxing. I think I'll just, just look at the, a garden or somewhere, look at the beach or whatever, just doing nothing. You know? Do, do these thoughts come to you? Get up! Do something. Read something. Look at your phone. Someone is calling. Someone is you know, trying to contact you. Respond. Respond. I'm so glad that my phone fell in the toilet bowl. I had peace for two, two days. Because uh, my secretary told all the pastors that my phone you know, is not contactable. And uh, she gave me another phone actually to, to contact, but I didn't use that phone, you know, just one side. So everyone knows that I have an excuse not contacting them. Two days, I had peace. And then the phone got healed. <laughs> I don't know why this device is supposed to save time, makes us lose time. You know what I'm saying? And every time you rest, there's a voice down there saying, get up! Do more work! That's why your colleagues will go ahead of you. Your, your, your competitors will, 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 will get an edge over you. We don't believe that when we rest, it's a posture of faith in God. That God will take care of your business. Amen? That's what I do, Pastor Prince. I don't work. I don't do nothing. I let my wife work. I relax all the time. No, you are a lazy person. All right? That's a real word. Okay, so load them with more work. That's the devil's voice. Make them sweat. Okay, so they have to deliver the daily quarter of the bricks at the same time. By, by the way, brick making is terrible. All right? They have to step on the straw. Amen? They have to bend down. They have to collect like this and they have to form the shape and get up, down. It's back-breaking work. Are you listening? All right, drop down. The Israelite foreman could see that they were in serious trouble when they were told, you must not reduce the number of bricks you make each day. As they left Pharaoh's court, they confronted Moses and Aaron who were waiting outside for them. The foreman said to them, may the Lord judge and punish you for making us sting before Pharaoh and his officials. You have put a sword into their hands, an excuse to kill us. Then Moses went back to the Lord and protested. Now imagine, Imagine, you are the pastor sent to preach. So, when you preach to them about healing, the, the very first thing that happened is this testimony. They say that, of all the weeks, this week I felt sick. <laughs> Actually, we were okay, you know. I think you put a sword in the devil's hands. You know, you, you, for no reason, you know, we, we were okay. When I started taking communion, I felt sick. Now, these are the things I want to answer. Because you might not know, it happened to them. These are the same people later on says, hey, I'm strong, man. Woo! I can run. I can, I can fly. I, can, I feel like I can, I'm a new man. When there was none feeble among their tribes. But long before that manifestation, there is these moments that we don't see. And leaders, take heart. Find comfort in these stories. They are there to encourage us. What? Moses says, what's happening? I was sent by God. I saw the burning bush. I, I saw the signs on my hand and, and how God healed my hand of leprosy and, and the signs that God showed me the snake and I become a rod again. I saw all that. I heard God's voice telling me, go and, and I'll, deli I'll use you to deliver my people. I've heard their cry and I'm sending you. Didn't God send me? Didn't I talk to Pharaoh? Now they, it's, they're worse off. I'll tell you this. Sometimes there's a voice, almost like a voice telling me, don't preach 
healing to the people. Because you know what happens, right, when you do that. And there were times in the past that when I preached on healing, Jessica would fall sick. So much so, like something spiritual going on that I almost held back from preaching. I'd rather preach on other things than healing. Why? Because invariably, someone falls sick in my family. Now, that doesn't happen as often anymore because I've, I've got an army to pray for me. Before Sunday comes, I get them to pray for me and my family. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But that, there's this fear. Now listen carefully. You say, well, I'm, I don't want this pressure, Pastor. So I'm not going to, I'm going to take communion. Then you are lost. You become natural. You, like people of the world, will have to depend on natural things. But if I tell you that your sickness is supernatural, is spiritual, carnal means cannot overcome something spiritual. The weapons of our warfare are not material. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Can I have a good amen, people? The Chinese say, Hong, wind. You know, the pain comes or my, my hand, you know, is, is the wind. I feel like, it's literally, they say the wind. And yet evil spirit in the Greek is wind. In Hebrew, ruach. It's literally like the Holy Spirit, like the wind. He's mani he manifests himself like a wind. And yet you feel like a wind come on you, you feel the pain in your body. No, rebuke that in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't just use natural uh, koyo. Uh, whatever you call it. What's the word? Natural uh, uh, ointment. Ointment. Amen. Because that's natural. And that is spiritual. That you feel a wind come and you feel the pain. Talk to that wind. Say spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ, lose my body and let me go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And do it once. Believe it's done. Amen. And, and, and you won't be wind up. Okay? So Moses went back to the Lord. Good practice. Leaders, listen, when your people complain to you and they bring you questions you cannot answer and you find that results are not happening the way you want it to happen, in fact, it's the opposite. What do you do? Go back to the Lord. Don't leave the Lord. Don't say, I'm going back to sales. <laughs> I'm going back to my, my practice. I'm going back to this. I'm going back to that. Hey, go to the Lord. You don't understand? Ask the Lord. You want to complain? Complain to the Lord. You want to pour your heart? Go to the Lord. It's the person that's the most important. The person carries the benefit. And sometimes he wants us to learn so that others can be blessed. So you go to the Lord. That's what Moses did. He went to the, back to the Lord, back to the Lord and protested, why have you brought all this trouble on your own people, Lord? Why do you send me? I'm very encouraged when I look at Moses, you know. We always have him like Charlton Heston. Let my people go. Yeah. But actually, he's like, God, why have you brought all this trouble on your own people? Would you like to see God's answer? Would you like to see God's answer? I love it. God answers like this. Ever since he told God, look at this, drop down. Then the Lord told Moses, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. When he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them <laughs> to leave his land. So God has a purpose and the purpose is not just for your deliverance. That plan never changes. Your healing never changes. All right? He wants you to be healed. But sometimes there is a process by which before the manifestation comes, God is dealing with you and God is dealing with your enemy. Are you listening, people? Sometimes, all right, we, we tend to like, we hear something, okay, take communion, all right? It becomes a ritual. When nothing happens, okay, let's, 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 let's resort to, you know. But the, the problem is this. We make it a ritual. Nothing ritualistic is effective in the kingdom of God. Once it becomes a ritual, it's no more effective. But Pastor Prince, don't you think partaking every day can become a ritual? No. Do you kiss your wife every day? Okay, forget it. No. Okay. Um, do you eat every day? Yes, Singaporeans, do you eat every day? Do you eat every day? Yes. Oh, yes. How many times a day? And do you eat sometimes the same food? So, when it comes to something, you know, about God, it's always like, you can become a ritual. No. Just make sure that you don't rush through it. Amen. Just meditate. Sing if you need to, whatever it is. I know with, with children around sometimes, you partake. 
like my son, if, if, if one of us or whatever, you know, we don't feel well, he would, take communion, he says. And he loves it. He loves it. He will look at us and, and he will take communion. Then he will peel off by himself. Then before I can pray, he's in his mouth already. <laughs> one time he went to his sister's room, all right, came out, his mouth was full of, and all the bread of the communion was gone. <laughs> he still doesn't know how to peel off the, for the drink, you know, so the, all the bread was gone. So he loves communion, but the, the, the motive and all that, I, I, I'm not too sure yet. He knows Jesus' body. He knows that. Amen? So if you want to spend time doing it with them as a testimony, amen, like he always say, take communion, right? That's a good testimony. But the thing, you can do it on your own. You can take time with the Lord. All right? Just worship the Lord and make sure you... But even then, sometimes it's not as spectacular as the children of Israel. Next day, they came out without any disease. So what happens? Pastor, how? How then? By the way, when God says what? He will force them to leave His land. Do you know that it wasn't until 10 plagues happened, even after God said this? Do you know there were days and days before this, ha- before this can, be, can be carried out, that God will force, that Pharaoh be forced to leave the people? Pharaoh wanted the people out. God had to deal with Pharaoh. Do you understand? Amen? At the same time, He was dealing with the people because every plague, I don't have time to teach this. Every plague that was mentioned, every plague, has to do with an idol of Egypt. God was showing, they trusted in this, they trusted in the sun, God blotted out the sun. There was darkness all around. Amen. They worshipped frogs, and frogs came out, all right, and flooded their land. So God was dealing for His people as well to learn that He is the true God the true Jehovah. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right? Now, maybe our delay, God is teaching us. God is teaching us that He's not a formula. He wants you. And He wants you to see His person. Can I have a good amen? All right? Yet, He paid for you to have it. All right. We all know this, amen? And we all know that finally, the answer came. How many will feel you know, like you'll be embarrassed, right? You see Moses and you're one of those that, you know, God judged you for talking to Pharaoh. Now you see Moses and you say, Moses, strong. Yeah, Moses says, never mind what you said. I forgive you. And thanks, Moses. All of us have moments where we feel like, you know, we cannot see the future, but your future is beautiful. It's as bright as God's promises. Amen. Maybe you're discouraged because you've been waiting, you took commun- uh, you're communion and all that, nothing seems to happen, or you, you got a bad prognosis and all that, and you let go of the communion. Imagine the boy letting go of the communion, or the parents letting go of the communion on the seventh day, on the eighth day, on the ninth day. There's nothing magical in 15. I'm not saying how long. Okay, what about now? Abraham, a pastor prince, man of God, always they receive their instant. No, it's not true. We come to Abraham. Abraham, in Genesis 14, received communion, right? Look at this, Melchizedek. Now, who is Melchizedek? Some people say he's a real person, amen. Uh, uh, Some say, and I subscribe to that, that he's a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ, amen. Whatever you believe, one thing is for sure we agreed on, he typifies the person of Jesus Christ and his priesthood for us today. It's not Levitical, it's Melchizedek priesthood, right? Okay, so Melchizedek, king of Salem. Now, Salem later become Jerusalem. Salem is king of perfection, wholeness, completeness. He's the king of completeness. King means what? He has mastered that realm. That kingdom is his. Yeah? Are you with me so far? Well, Jesus is the king of completeness. Salem, completeness. Completeness. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. That is Salem, completeness. Where you get the word shalom. Peace, completeness, health, wholeness, safety. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. That's how he introduced Melchizedek. He brought out bread and wine and he's the king of completeness. So what do you think this bread and wine is all about? It's communion. Am I right? So we all know this passage here. I know you all know it very well, so we won't spend too much time here. But just to show you that, that Abraham partook of communion. Abraham's response was, the last line, he gave Melchizedek a tithe of all. I, I, I can't begin to tell you that this was done before the law and, and I don't want to put a, 
you know, like a law over your head. Because this was done before the law. A tithe is a glad response to knowing that God is the, the source of all your blessings. Material especially in this area, all right? And God brought them out with silver and gold. And their forefather, the, 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 the very one, the father of the Jewish people, gave tithes. All right? Are you with me so far? Question, question. What chapter is this? Genesis what? 14. Abraham wanted what? Above everything else. What did Abraham want at this time in his life? Talk to me, quick. A son, right? Someone says, well, Pastor Prince, this is Genesis 14, don't forget. 14, 14, okay? He took communion in Genesis 14. What is, does he want above everything else? He wanted healing for his wife's womb. He wanted him to be fruitful. He wanted a child from Sarah. And that was healing. Right? And by the way, who says after you take communion, you'll never be attacked by fear and all that? Right after Genesis 14, the very first verse of the next verse, next chapter, after these things, after he took communion, after he gave tithe, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, don't be afraid, Abraham. That means what? Abraham was afraid. So who says taking communion means, I'm strong, there's no more fear. No, you'll still be attacked. In fact, you'll be attacked. It's not a prophecy, I'm just telling you. But then God comes on and God says, don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your Megan in Hebrew. I am your shield. You see the Megan David? David, uh, that's a shield for Israel. I am your shield. I am your shield. Protection, right? Shield. He says, I am your shield. When God is your shield, you are shielded. I am your shield. How big is God? Your father. Don't be afraid, Abraham. Don't be afraid, Lim Peng Sun. <laughs> Lim Peng Sun in Chinese means someone who faints. <laughs> Don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. <laughs> I was told some years ago, I've been using this for years, and someone told me one day, Pastor Prince, do you know there is a Lim Peng Sun in our church? So, I apologize, Brother Peng Sun. We apologize. But it's time to call yourself Timothy. Or Zechariah, okay? Zechariah Lim sounds good, doesn't it? Amen. If your name is, if your name is Tay something, T-A-Y something, Tay... King Guan or whatever, don't call yourself the Christian name Habakkuk, okay? No. It's a Chinese joke. Habakkuk, not, doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound right. That, that is Chinese uh, dish. It's a pork dish, pork soup. Stop it, Joseph Prince. Come on. Don't be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield. I am your shield, and look at this. Not just your reward, your, not just your great reward, your exceedingly great reward. In the Hebrew, me'ot, rabah. Both words are big words. I'm your exceedingly great reward. Check the word reward in the Hebrew. is the word salary, remuneration. It's used for that. Don't be afraid. I am your shield, I'll protect you, and I'll, I'm your exceedingly great reward. You know what's uh, his response? That's fine. Some people don't mind, you know, uh, all that. They say, I, 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 I'm not into uh, prosperity and all that. Like Abraham's response was, what, what was the point if I go childless? That's what his response was. My question is this. Genesis 14 says he received communion. When did a child come? When did the child come? You who say, I've been, I've been taking communion for so, so long, Pastor Prince. Nothing has been happening. How long have you been taking? One month. Okay. How long after Abraham took communion? And listen, he took communion not like the children of Israel, partook of a lamb, a shadow, a picture. He took it straight from the hands of Melchizedek, Jesus. And it's not roasted lamb as a picture of the bread. It's literally bread and wine from the hands of himself. 
the Lord Himself. Okay. How long before the manifestation came? How long? How old was Abraham at this time? This will help you all. All right, he had the manifestation. Isaac came when he was 100 years old, but then Sarah was pregnant nine months, right? The year before. And that's why the Bible says, when he was 99, the Lord appeared to him. I am God Almighty, right? This time next year, and so she was pregnant that year when he was 99. 99. How old was he in Genesis? By the way, Genesis 21. Show them Genesis 21. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said the Lord did. This is Genesis 21. You know how far 21 and 14 is or not? Don't go by chapters. I'll tell you how old he is. And then Sarah conceived. Would you like to know? He was 83 when he met Melchizedek. That means how long? How many years? How many years? How many years? 16 years. Your math is so bad. I mean, come on. 16 years. 16 years. 16 years, people. And he never gave up. Abraham persevered in faith. I want to tell you something about faith and patience. Hebrews 6 says, and I'm closing. Hebrews 6, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope till the end. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Patience here is not patient towards your family members, your colleague or whatever. Patience here is endurance, steadfastness. Imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So sometimes, it's not instantaneous. You have to persevere, Amen. endure. Amen. I say endure. Amen. Pastor Darren, a few days ago, shared with us that he was struck with migraine like he never had it for many years. He said, more than 10 years, I never had that kind of migraine. And he had an attack like um, in the evening and he tried to sleep it off. And at night, he woke up even more worse, he said. And then the next day he got up, it was terrible. And then the day after, we are supposed to be doing a shoot. There's something about this book, uh, Live the Let Go Life, that's going to set a lot of people free Amen. from stress, worry, and anxiety. Amen. That even we were, uh, like for me, I was under attack. When I was in the States, I had like terrible nightmares that I never used to have. Night after night after night before my shoot. You know, and I know that this message will go into millions of homes. Amen. It's as if the devil is threatening me not to preach it. And even when, 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 when uh, Darren was struck with this, he was supposed to be doing a major part of the whole thing because he's writing the script and all the you know, planning. And he's the leader for the entire thing. And he was struck down. He felt, but he said, ah, when he got up, it became even worse. So he told his wife, he would just take time to go somewhere and just be with the Lord. You know? And then he persevered to prepare. He persevered patience. The Bible says those who receive the word, Sometimes we receive the word and Jesus says it falls on stony ground because people have joy for a while. But when tribulation, trouble comes because of the word, they are offended. They are stumbled. All right? Jesus shared this on the, about the four grounds. Listen, but those who in an honest and good heart understand the word and they'll bring forth fruit with perseverance. That's Luke. Luke's version of what Jesus shared. Shares that part, what Jesus says, bring forth fruit with perseverance. So he said, I'll just persevere. I'll just persevere. That's what happened to me also. I had the symptoms in my body. I said, I'll just persevere. Amen. I won't excuse myself. I won't say postpone to another time. I'll just persevere. Amen. And guess what? The moment he said that, boom, the whole thing left. There's something about this that I, 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 I want to encourage you in closing that when you serve the Lord, something happens in Exodus 23. So you shall serve the Lord your God this be our last verse. And He'll bless your bread and your water and I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. Those of you having heart conditions, whatever, check the word from the midst of you. It's also the Hebrew word for heart. There's a word called left and there's a word called this word here. In the midst of you includes your heart. In fact, Young's translation says, I'll take sickness away from your heart. Young's literally says, I'll take sickness away from your heart. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I'll fulfill the number of your days. I have suffered miscarriage once in, in, in my life, Wendy and I. Okay, so don't feel bad when you do. Amen, but we are pressing on for the hundredfold. Amen. And guess what? My son came along. And he's definitely a restoration. Amen. So no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I'll fulfill the number of your days. 
No, no. Notice what God says. You shall serve the Lord your God. And He will bless and I'll take sickness away. Listen, listen. Look up here. Serving is not something you pay for your healing. It's not. It was paid for when the stripes fell upon His back. You saw that just now. But I'll tell you something. Listen. When you say you are healed by His stripes, you have taken communion. You know why the devil is stopping you and giving you um, all kinds of symptoms in your body? He doesn't want you to serve the Lord. He doesn't want you to be effective for the Lord. Pastors, leaders, if you're attacked physically, he doesn't want you to be effective. He wants you to, re to just retire early. Are you listening? Start serving the Lord. Because after you take communion, you must have an act of faith to show the Lord. And when you act out, you, I'll still serve the Lord. I don't care. I have this condition, whatever. I want to serve the Lord. When you do that, you're acting in faith. And then when he came for the shoot, we had the, in the studio and all that. And then when he shared with the, the, our visual people about his challenge, they said, oh, these few days we have, one person had this, another person had that, one guy had a back condition. But he says he'll persevere. As he persevered, it all left. Are you listening? As you step out to serve. Now, you say, Pastor Prince, I know people who serve the Lord and, and now they are, they are down with something or they have left and gone back to heaven, you know. And uh, listen, listen. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying all these things are automatic. I'm just saying to you, serve the Lord. In the Hebrew, there's Aleph Taf there. You shall serve, you shall serve Aleph Taf, the Lord. Serve Jesus. Go back again to the verse. Okay, go back to the verse. Exodus 23. You shall serve the Lord your God. Serve Jesus. Apostle Prince, I know of this guy in, in full-time ministry. Can I say something to you? Look up here. Just because you see me here doesn't mean I'm serving the Lord. Just because you see people around doesn't mean they're serving the Lord. It's possible for someone to be in full-time ministry and they're serving their ego. Or they're in ministry because they're serving their pocketbook. Some of them are serving their interests. They're serving uh, the the adulation of people, or they are serving all kinds of things. No one knows who is serving the Lord, but the Lord. If your heart is for the Lord, no one, even people say you're doing it for money, whatever, you have the assurance, the Lord and you know. Just, just because you see people serving doesn't mean they're serving the Lord. Just because you see a musician, I'm not reflecting on any musician, doesn't mean they're serving the Lord. But when you serve the Lord, He will bless your bread and your water. You'll take sickness away from the midst of you. So whatever you do, don't give your sickness as an excuse. Step out and say, Lord, I've taken communion. I'm going to serve you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And see health spring forth speedily. Are you blessed? Amen. This portion here, I said one last verse, right? One last chapter, actually. This chapter. I, I still stick to the chapter, okay? Chapter. Drop down, drop down. I will not drive the enemies out from before you in one year lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. What did God say? Little by little, I drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. Little by little. Little by little. We always thought of God, drive all the enemies out. Today, our enemies are not physical people. Our enemies are not the Hebites, the Hittites, the Canaanites. Our enemies are diseases. They have names, sicknesses and all that. High blood pressure, all right, tumor, whatever it is. Okay, God says, I will not drive them out in one year. I will not drive them out immediately, in other words. But I'll drive them out little by little. Why? Because you're not strong yet. I want the process to benefit you. I want you to be strong. It's on the same chapter as, I'll bless your bread and water and take sickness away. Amen. Amen. Child of God, don't be discouraged. Okay? Your healing is coming. Amen. The manifestation of it. And it's coming speedily. Amen. Don't give up. Give praise to God. Amen. As this bless you, praise the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed all across this place. In the name of Jesus, I set you free right now to receive the Lord Jesus. No power of darkness and no unbelief can stop you when you say yes to Jesus. Amen. Perhaps you are here, you have never said yes to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Christ died for your sins. Christ is risen for your justification. Christ at the Father's right hand wants to be your shepherd and Lord. 
Will you allow Him? He wants to be your shield and your exceedingly great reward. If that is you, pray this prayer with me right now, wherever you are. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank You for Your love for me. I thank You for the word I've heard. I confess from my heart that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I believe Christ is risen for my justification. Thank You, Father. All my sins are forgiven. I'm greatly blessed. Thank You, Father, in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Lift your hands all across this place. This coming week, the Lord bless you and the Lord Himself keep you. Keep you from every harm, danger, from ev anything that would hurt or destroy. Jesus says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And the Lord Himself protect you from every sickness and disease. The Lord protect your loved ones, your family from every evil. The Lord favours you, smiles on you, cause doors of favour to open to you. Shut doors that are no good for you. The Lord make your crooked path straight, that you walk with rest. You walk in a place called green pastures by the still waters and know that surely goodness and mercy will follow you. Even this week, goodness and mercy will hunt you down. In Jesus' name, I bless you. I bless you with that peace that garrisons your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, thanks for coming. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. But don't go just yet. If you'd like to receive prayer, share your testimony, or find out more about Gospel Partner, just click the link on this screen. If not, I'll see you in the next episode.